All right, so even though I kind of have this topic already logically covered in my videos, I have a lot of questions where people are asking to do a VLOOKUP from multiple tabs. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly in this video. So right now I have this IDs and then I have this data one that has some information with some of those IDs. Then I have a couple of other tabs very similar, just different IDs that match the list of IDs we have in this first tab, right? So we're trying to do a lookup from all of those three data tabs to basically pull to this init tab. So let's say we're trying to get this full address. So I'm gonna go back here. So let's start by doing a very basic VLOOKUP. So I'm gonna start with equals VLOOKUP and my search key or lookup ID is gonna be this key, the first one on the left, comma. Then I need the range. So for now, I'm just gonna do for one of them. So I'll go to data one and I'll just select the data starting from this IDs going all the way right. And I'll just drop the end reference to send this all the way down. So the main thing with lookup tables in VLOOKUP functions is that the first column needs to contain the key that you're searching. So right now our A column is that column. So I have that included, comma. Then I need to provide the column number index. So since I want this second one, I'll just do two. So that's two within my selected area, comma. And then finally, is my data sorted? False, so that's zero or false. So I'm gonna do this, hit enter. So for now, see that gives me the match for this particular key. Now, if I want to be able to drag this formula down, then I'm gonna select this range and do F4 to do absolute reference, then I'm gonna hit enter. And then if I go to the corner and double click, to drag this down, you will see how we get some matches and the rest of them don't really match. So some of these other matches are supposed to be on data two and data three. So now to get it to the point that I also include data two and data three in this lookup, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get back to my formula and I'm gonna change this range to an array because VLOOKUP can also accept an array. So to do that, I'll just put this range within these curly brackets, just like this. And for right now, if I just hit enter and drag this formula down, and this time I'm not gonna be able to double click because there's already some data below, but I can do command shift down and command D or control shift down, control D to do this. So right now I should not feel any difference whatsoever. See, it works exactly the same way, but we have converted this to an array. So because this is an array, now we can kind of add to this array. So I can go after this first range within that curly bracket, do a semicolon, and then add another one after this. So I'm gonna go to data two this time, and I'm gonna select, again, starting from the IDs and down. And I'll drop the end reference to just go all the way down. I'll do F4 immediately to lock the range. So I'll hit enter and that should add the second range. So as of right now, if I just take this formula, control shift down, control D, that should now be including the second table as well. So as you can see, now we get more matches. So now to add the third table, it's kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna go back and go after the second table and do a semicolon and add the third table to this. So I'll go to data three, select this area, drop the end reference, do F4 to have that absolute reference, hit enter and then drag it down with doing command shift down and command D. So now we got this, so let's take a look. So as you can see, we still don't find some matches. So that means this one, for example, was in neither one of those three tabs. But the rest, as you can see, we're finding some matches in 
one of those three tabs and there we are. And that would be our formula to do a lookup from multiple worksheets at the same time. The only requirement for this to work is to make sure that your data tabs have similar structure. You should have the same lookup column in the beginning, then the same columns following after that. So if you look here, I have these three columns in this particular order in this tab. Then I have those same three columns in this particular order in the second tab. And then so it goes for all of them. So if you want this to work, you need to make sure you follow that order. And since we're on this topic, let's also do an example of a lookup from a completely different file. So let's say these worksheets are not located in this particular spreadsheet, but they're located in different spreadsheets. So if you look here, I have this C data one in a separate spreadsheet, data two in a separate spreadsheet, data three in a separate spreadsheet. Now in the spreadsheets, I have this tab name, see it's called data one, then data two, then data three. I'm gonna change them so that we don't get it confused with the file name here. So I'm just gonna change this to something like data. Actually, let's just do info. I'm gonna change this one to info two and this one as well. There we go. So all the tabs are now called info. They don't have to be, but that's what I picked. And these are those different files. So if I wanted to do a lookup similar to this from those different sheets, let me just clear this first of all. And now these wouldn't exist, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Which means this is not gonna work because all of this is not valid anymore. What we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the same formula in its essence. It's still gonna look for this ID. It's still gonna look up this in an array like this. And it's still gonna check the second column in that array because in our data, that part that we're looking up, it's still gonna be column number two. And our lookup column is gonna be column number one. That's gonna be that. And it's still gonna be exact match, which is the zero or false option in our VLOOKUP, right? So the only things we need to change here is these ranges. We need to change them to basically get them from these different files instead of getting them from the same file. So how are we gonna do that? Well, it's gonna be very, very similar to this. So let me just change it to just one of them. Let's start with this and then we'll come back and do the rest. So first I'm gonna leave this formula alone and I'm gonna make sure that I make a connection to this file. And to do that, you need to make sure you're not inside of another formula. So you have to do this separately. So I'm gonna go here and do import range function. And this function accepts, as you can see, spreadsheet URL or spreadsheet ID. That has to be text, so it's gonna be in quotes. Double quotes here, and then in between those, I'm gonna go to the first file, right click on this URL, copy it, go back to this file and paste that right in there. So that's our first argument for this. And then the second argument is the range as string. So that means it needs to go in quotations like this. So I need to point to my data and my data is located on info tab in here. And that starts from A2 through C all the way down. So to do that, I'm gonna type info, exclamation sign, and then A2 colon C. That's the range. I'll match this, even though that shouldn't matter. I'll do uppercase info, similar to this. Actually, that's lowercase. So let's match that. So for now, what I want to do, I wanna hit enter and I want to establish the connection. So this is gonna be an important step to do. So I'm gonna hit enter and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this error and see how it says allow access. I'm gonna click on that and that should establish a connection to that particular spreadsheet. So now that I have that connection, I'm gonna basically just copy this formula without the equal sign, hit escape, go back to this formula and replace this, which used to be one of the ranges over here with that import range function, just like that within those curly brackets again, as a part of the array, because we're going to need multiple of these. 
So I'm gonna hit enter. So for now, that does what it does. Now I need to continue with the rest. So I need to establish this connection again to the second and to the third spreadsheet as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go to this second spreadsheet. Now the range is gonna be the same, the tab name is the same. The only thing that's different right now is the URL of this file. So I'm gonna copy that, go back to this, open this and replace this URL with my URL. I'm gonna hit enter. And again, we need to allow access. So click allow access, there it is. So now after you do this, then you put this formula in the other one. Remember, you can't directly just put the formula inside of the other formula because this step of allowing access is important step to do. So I'm gonna copy this, hit escape, go back to this. And basically what I do here, just do a semicolon after the first import range and paste the second import range after that. Hit enter and then I continue with the next one. So I'll go to this data tree, copy this link, go to my first worksheet, replace the link, paste, hit enter, click, allow access, and then we'll just grab this, copy this import range function without the equal sign, hit escape, come back in here, after the last one, we'll do semicolon and paste the third one, still within those curly brackets, and hit enter. And then this I can remove because we don't need it anymore. So now I have this that's pointing to those other files. I don't need to do F4 for any of these import ranges right here because this is a string. So it's not gonna change as I'm dragging the formula. So at this point to get the rest, I'll just drag the formula down. I should be able to double click because there's nothing else below. And you can see we should be getting the same sort of results. And that should show you how to do this from multiple tabs within the same file or from completely different spreadsheets if you wanted to do that. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.